You uh, weird chord changes? Yes. Yes. You're now reacting to the solo artist An Yehun, who is the runner-up of the fifth season of K-Pop Star. Her style combines many genres of music, including traditional Korean music, which can be mainly heard in her vocals. Same Thought was released as a single in 2017. The lyrics express her feelings after a breakup. Two people who once shared the same thought of love are no longer together, and An Yehun says that the other person will soon share the same thoughts of sorrow because of loss. The song is composed and written by An Yehun. I love it already. Five one. Hmm. That was almost like a blue note. That ba da da da. I get it though, I see these folky aspects of her voice. Man, this is weird. Because first of all, it's in like 3-4, right? And then... You uh, weird chord changes? Yes. Yes. With the accordion. Yes. <laughs> and depending on the accordion setting too, I feel like the octaves also give it that character. Wonder, I'm assuming from what you said that 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 might be characteristic of Korean traditional style. She has a very folksy way of singing. It's combining some like that traditional, yeah, inflection. Yeah, like little grace notes. And it's very in pitch, so it's really refined. Of that secondary dominant, she sounded just like the harmonica there. That's so cool. Yeah. This is like a light swing ballad. The accordion's acting like a a second singer. <laughs> I also really like this. It feels like improv, the accordion doing oh, with I'm all of sure the ornamentation. It yeah. It's really cool. So I got a major four, I think. <laughs> Yo, she's got some soul. Wow, her voice is so like makes me want to cry. Wow, she's really going for it. I appreciate that. It's really cool. very strong, her voice. I love the simplicity of this. It's, I mean, you can get so much with just like three instruments, including the voice. Nothing is wasted, you know? I like that.
Ooh. <laughs> vibrato. Wow, it doesn't resolve fully. The, the, the accordion, the melody resolves into the right chord, but the, the harmonies never do. That was a tasty ending with yeah. great musical collaboration right there. Yeah, it's only like a lament, lament bass at the end. Oh, it's like going down, down, down. You hear like the, what do you call that again? Contrary motion. Mm -hmm. And then that accordion hits that, that minor third. <laughs> three. And it's like, I see. And you're like, oh. Literally. It doesn't end the pain. Oh. Oh, I see. Uh, I forgot about the cadence. Oh. I want to play the accordion so bad. Mm. Loved nice. it. 10 out of 10. What made it a 10 out of 10 for you? Everything. Instrumentation. Very simple. But so much was there. The harmonies were fun and creative. And so was some, the melodic writing. Melodic contour. And then also her voice is just really cool. And I totally get this like in folk influence. Her voice with like this, she had um, a few moments of like this vibrato that um, just a really tight and and fast. Yeah, and it seemed kind of trained or like a technique that people like Western style singers don't really do that type of vibrato. You know, yeah, they, we've probably got like the wider like. Whoa. Yeah, it goes wider and then faster as you like yes. get towards the end. I loved it. Full stop. Full I... stop. I, like, I don't Double comment bar. about people's voices a lot because I really, like, that's not usually what I love about a song. I loved her voice. I thought don't you love how much um, the, for control she has over the variety like of sounds she, she can make? She would just switch into her head voice and yeah. it was effortless and then would go back yeah. and, like, really get, like, that growl kind of. Yeah. Oh, There's wow. a part of me, the classically sing, like, like the, singer, the tension. that, will, like, gives me that visceral worried feeling of, like, oh, man, that <laughs> could... <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I couldn't have felt good, but it's a different culture and style of singing she's using uh, And it's not like that's the only kind of Singing she can produce she has some really good really free sounding moments where it seems at, Sounds to me effortless and well sustained like mm, well supported free singing there's some good bits with vibrato in there too so it's what, th what that tells me is that she has a good control over how she can use her voice as an instrument to produce different styles of musical expression which is a which is a big feat for a musician to be able to be versatile ah, so there's something about folk singing folk and it just sounds a little bit rough on the edges but that's not a bad thing because in this case it makes it so distinct from all the pop music where it's the tempo's very straight. I was like, the way they sing, it needs to be like pitch perfect all the time. It's like they gotta slide into it in the same way. Yeah, it's very interesting. You have something a little bit rough around the edges, and then you have something really clean, the accordion, and just streamlining it all at once because it's contrasting with the shorter da 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 ba da ti da da. It's a very staccato. Staccato, and then you have a very legato accordion line. Mm -hmm. So having that contrast definitely gives it more color and more nuance to it and more well it expands the idea of same thoughts like even though it's the same like the, the vocalist and the piano are playing at the same time there's a difference because it continues to grow within mm -hmm. the same thought so very interesting so who hurt her i really want to know like what is she going through <laughs> Cause she seems like she's going through a lot right now. Yeah. Like <laughs> she was crying at like I felt like she was crying at the end of the song. I was just like, okay, go off. It's so good though. Like if you think about all the different ways that people have tried to portray crying, like if you think about Bach, like the side gesture where it's like, ah, 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 like that kind of yeah motives. But this is like she's just putting it in her voice. She's like ah, but in a really musical, healthy way. Gosh, there was that so one moment where we both like looked at each other because the timbre of her voice just so perfectly matched the timbre of the accordion, yeah. and that was kind of wild. Yeah. I was like, what? Like it, it just it's got a tinny it, sound. Yeah, it synced up so well. I was so surprised. I've never heard somebody be able to <laughs> sing with an accordion and have that timbre match before so like perfectly. Uh, I 
Yeah, I love the instrumentation with her voice. I yeah. thought they gave each other a lot of room too. Like when the accordion got like their own little improv solo, the piano had yeah. a lot of really nice moments at the end, especially when they were doing like the melody that she was singing kind of like fading away and then them giving her room to just yeah. do whatever she wanted. That was great. And like they would like cut away and just be her singing. They were able to work out a really good working relationship, I think, uh, collaboration, like a, a very good musical collaboration because it really fit together. There are yeah. also some really nice, like, musical, like, melodic motifs in there. Like, just like, bum, ba, dum, or like, just like three note things that are like, simple, catchy, really yeah. nice, just very, yeah. very, like, a nice waltz to just kind of like switch. It definitely, I think really by the end I real it is 9-8, but it doesn't feel stiff 9-8. They really kept the swingy feeling there. In most classical music, what um, is normal is to take the beat and to sort of like end the idea and the phrase and then start a new phrase on the, the next beat. So if I were to sing twinkle twinkle, I could sing twinkle twinkle little star or I could sort of end at each beat and then go into the next beat with the, the upbeat eighth note. So twinkle twinkle little star, you know, sort of leading into the next chord note. Whereas this was much more dum ba dum bum bum ba dum which is just different from the style yeah. that I've been pretty used to. I, yeah, I think one of the things that, especially in like classical music that we think about a lot is like the line of your phrasing. So like if we're thinking like twinkle, twinkle, little star, like the peak of the phrase isn't like based in one measure. There's like four measures that have the phrase. So it's like mm -hmm. twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. So it's like, it's leading somewhere. Whereas like one of the things we were commenting on in this song is how like the way that she's using accent and emphasis in her singing is very much like what the accompaniment is doing in the piano, where the first beat of every measure is very accented. And then there's kind of like, it's not staccato, but it's like marcato, sort of like shortened chords um, in the right hand. So it's more blocky in that sense, and it's more rhythmically focused. So like when she was singing, like a lot of it was like, da, 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 da. so it didn't feel quite as much like there was this like overarching line going somewhere, but that we were like really feeling the rhythm with her. I really like that idea and I think it really worked with the song especially because it's kind of got it's got the like lilt of a waltz um, which is always in three beats with an emphasis on the first beat because you know it's a dance so when you actually waltz there's like a big step and then you do two like really light steps and then you do a big step and you kind of go in like a circular motion while you're making like a square shape it's complicated I'm really <laughs> bad at it but um yeah so like when it comes to dancing, it makes sense to have like emphasis on those beats so that you can like get into the groove of the dance. And so I think it's the same sort of emphasis that I was hearing in her song.